Hello and welcome. My name is Keith Barker and building an NSX lab environment. And if you're new to NSX, that's a product from VMware now owned by Broadcom that allows you to implement virtualized routing and switching and micro segmentation and security. It is fantastic. However, if you want to build a home lab environment to support that, there are a lot of individual pieces involved. So have no fear in this series. What we're going to do is take a look at each of those components and I'll walk you through it step by step. So if you want to, you can build an NSX virtualized lab environment with some dedicated hardware as well as licenses and do it on a budget. So when you're all done, you'll have a playground that you can work with, snapshot and restore to get hands-on practice with NSX. Also, as a second note, this series of videos is also going to be very useful if you only need a specific part. So if you need, for example, information on how to set up a server, including setting up the disks and the firmware and so forth, or if you just want to see a part on how to deploy ESXi hosts, or how to deploy vCenter, this series of videos will contain all of that information as well. I also find it very useful to have a big picture view of what we're trying to accomplish. So let's take a moment right here in this overview and let's take a big picture look at the world of NSX. And this will also serve as an opportunity to take a look at some of the vocabulary used in the world of VMware and vSphere. So let's take a look at the core component, the computing resources used for VMware in a vSphere environment, and that is an ESXi host. So ESXi is the name of the hypervisor as part of vSphere. So let's say we have three servers, we'll have ESXi A and ESXi B and ESXi C. So think of each of these hosts like a dedicated server, and then think of the ESXi hypervisor software running on those hosts like the operating system for that host. So each of these servers is going to have one or more network interface cards. And in the world of VMware, they refer to those as VMNICs, the physical network adapters that connect to the network. And even though these ESXi hosts that are running the ESXi hypervisor software can be managed individually, most of the time, especially if you have more than one ESXi host, we're going to use a centralized management tool called vCenter. So vCenter runs as a virtual machine. So if we see the VCSA, that is an acronym for the vCenter server appliance. So we need vCenter that's going to be running in our network that we can go ahead and use to collectively manage our ESXi hosts. So the game plan would be you and I, we would go ahead and log into vCenter and then vCenter would interact with the ESXi host. So if we want to create a new VM, we log into vCenter, we create a new VM, we say we want to put it right here or right here or right here. And then vCenter working with the direct ESXi host causes those VMs to be created. Same thing for configuring the details about those VMs, including the networking. We do it all from vCenter, and then the ESXi hosts get their instructions and marching orders from vCenter. And as a whole, these ESXi hosts, which are being managed by vCenter, that can be referred to as a vSphere environment. And when we're managing a vSphere environment, we're logging onto the vCenter, as I mentioned a moment ago, and the interface that we're provided to work with and manage our vSphere environment is called the vSphere client which is a graphical user interface. So you and I are here at our management computer and we bring up a browser that connects to the vCenter. And once again, that represents the vSphere client that we're using to manage our vSphere environment. So these represent virtual machines running on their respective hypervisors. And for the networking, we could have one or more VLANs that we're connected to and working with. And we would have connectivity out to the physical world, usually via a firewall or a router providing that connectivity. Now, once we have a vSphere environment in place, we're also going to add on top of that the NSX component. So to implement NSX, we're going to have yet another controller, and that's called the NSX Manager, which runs as a VM. And then once the NSX Manager is deployed and configured, we can then start using additional features such as virtualized routing and switching, as well as security, including micro segmentation. So once we have the security component set up as part of NSX, if we have two VMs, for example, right here running on this ESXi host, if we want to control what traffic is allowed back and forth between those two VMs, we can leverage the security aspect as part of NSX Manager to make that happen. And from my perspective, it would be incredibly useful to have all of this be able to be configured in a lab environment that we could snapshot and restore when needed so we could practice over and over and over again regarding anything we wanted to with NSX. Another challenge is how do we deploy all of this and do it on a budget? Well, here is what I propose we do as part of this video series. Number one, we're going to need some hardware. And what I propose we do is we get one physical server that's going to support our entire lab environment. Now, fortunately, as time marches forward, older hardware becomes more affordable. So in my lab environment, I have a few R630 servers. Those are from Dell. 
And even though not all the CPUs that are in the R630s are supported with the current version of vSphere, which is vSphere version 8, for a lab environment, most of the CPUs that are in the Dell R630s will still function. They'll give us a warning that, hey, this isn't fully supported, but for a lab environment, it works great. And in R630 today, as of this recording, with about 256 gigabytes of RAM, which is quite a bit, those can be had for close to $300 used on auction sites like eBay. So the hardware might be around $300. And one of the great answers there for licensing is to use VMUG Advantage. Now VMUG is an acronym for the VMware Users Group, and they have an option called VMUG Advantage. I'll put ADV there for short. And that VMUG Advantage membership is $200 a year. And for that $200, they give you licenses, one year eval licenses for just a boatload of products, including vCenter and SX Manager and the ESXi hypervisor software. So that way, when you build a lab environment, you can have licensing legally through the VMUG Advantage program. And the total cost for the membership will just be $200 a year. And if you don't need a lab for longer than a year, it'll just be the 200 and you'll have the eval licenses available to you for up to a year. So the end result that we're looking for is a lab environment that we can run on one physical server using the licenses from VMUG Advantage. And that's what this series is going to walk you through. So if we do some reverse engineering here, we'll need NSX and we can get the license for NSX through the VMUG Advantage. But to run NSX, we need vSphere. And as part of vSphere, that involves the ESXi hosts and also the vCenter server to manage those hosts. And then for the physical host that's going to support this lab environment, we also need to make sure that we can initially install ESXi on that physical host, as well as update the BIOS and the firmware to make sure it is current. And for our journey together, I have this brand new, or at least brand new to me, a Dell R630 blade server. It's 19 inches across, it fits in a rack, and it had a little bit of damage in shipping. On the side over here, it's crushed a little bit. So I have not yet powered this on because I wanted to walk you through step by step getting a device like this, like this blade server, and then walking through each and every step along the way, including connecting to it, figuring out what the IP address is, and managing this server and getting it ready to support the ESXi software. Also, because I know I'm going to get some questions on it, let's talk about my fingernails just for a moment. I went to Disney World with some family members a few weeks ago, and in preparation for that, I had some nail work done. So I've got C-3PO, I've got Groot, I've got the Hulk right there, I've got BB-8 over here, i got Darth Vader, there's C-3PO, this is Chewie's belt, and over here I've got Iron Man. All right, so those will be gone here in a few weeks, and I just wanted to point out what they were before we went too much further. And again, this represents the physical server from Dell that we'll be using, and I did buy this on eBay a couple weeks ago, and the cost was around $300. And it does include 256 gigabytes of RAM, which is an amazing amount of RAM for $300. So join me in the next video as part of the series as we prep the hardware to support our nested lab environment.